First up, we go to Louisville, Kentucky for a pretrial hearing in the case of 19-year-old Keontae Hunter. Two years earlier, Hunter was accused of entering the home of 21-year-old Jesse Williams and shooting him and his girlfriend, Shardedrick Cooper, while they slept. Jesse died of a gunshot wound to the chest. Shardedrick was hit in the leg and survived. The couple were acquaintances of Hunter's, but the motive was unclear. Hunter was arrested and charged with murder, attempted murder, first-degree assault, and tampering with physical evidence. Today, the court is hearing testimony and arguments about a motion filed by Hunter's public defender, Josh Roberts, to suppress a statement Hunter gave to police after the shooting. Keontae, who was a juvenile at the time, the case law does support, and just our own common sense knows that juveniles have a lowered understanding, a lower intelligence when it comes to legal rights and things of that nature. Hunter seems to take umbrage at Robert's comments. I would argue that given his situation as a juvenile, that the Commonwealth has not met their burden showing that that was an intelligent and voluntary waiver. We'll get you a written order once I've reviewed the statement in its entirety. Go ahead, Mr. Hunter. Yeah. Mr. Now. Hunter, hold on. Hunter's been sitting quietly for 35 minutes, but decides he's got something to say. I can't do this. Get dudes. You, you I need can't, to sit I down. Won't do, I won't do it off my sit case. Down. I, I'm standing in line. Uh, it's conflict of interest let's between go, me and the con. Nah, man, I want to. I want to file a verbal motion. Mister, I can't do this. Get dudes. You need to sit I down. I won't do. I won't do it off my sit case. Down. An officer gets Hunter back in his seat. Man, nah, let. But when he drops the f bomb in open court, the deputies decide it's time for him to leave. Mister. That's when Hunter leans in and spits in his attorney's face, then swings his handcuffed arms at him. The deputies pull Hunter away just in time and wrestle him to the floor. As he's led out of the courtroom, Hunter leaves Roberts with a threat. Come on, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm coming to my next court date, dog. Spit in your face. I'm breaking the you okay, Mr. Roberts? I am, Judge. Mr. Despite the outburst, the motion was actually successful. Part of Hunter's statement was suppressed, and he was assigned a new public defender. But eventually, he was convicted of murder, first-degree assault, and tampering with physical evidence. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Next, we're in Harlan, Kentucky, for the sentencing hearing of 59-year-old Cletus Robbins, Jr. Following a three-day trial, Robbins was convicted on a litany of shockingly violent charges. The defendant is guilty of, one, kidnapping and serious, with serious physical injury, two, robbery in the first degree, assault in the second degree, unlawful imprisonment, wanton endangerment, first degree, and being a persistent felony offender first degree. As Judge Kent Hendrickson proceeds with Robbins' laundry list of crimes, the prosecution interjects after Robbins repeatedly turns around and glares at them. Your Honor, the Commonwealth will request that the court uh, give notice to the defendant not to communicate with the Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah. In the courtroom, defendants are often prohibited from communicating verbally or non-verbally with anyone except their own attorney. Problem is, Robbins isn't exactly a rule follower. Don't tell him. Hey, 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 no, none of that. Hey, none of that. Now just calm down. Yeah. You Stand calm down. You take it easy. Stand up up there on that side, please. Settle down, please. Welcome. Jury ass in court here. <sighs> Listen, buddy, I'm too old for this. Hey. I'm too old for this, too. With tensions later calmed, Robin stands in silence as Judge Hendrickson hands down a heavy sentence. He shall be confined to the state penitentiary for a maximum of 25 years. And that concludes this matter for the court. Thank you. The sentencing may conclude things for the court, but not for Robbins. <laughs> that is 
the sound of Cletus Robbins spitting one of the prosecuting attorneys. Hey! Before he's hauled out of the courtroom, Robbins makes a final threat. You better hold on. The court has that on record. We know that that was a threat, and we will be saving that record for uh, possible criminal charges. No additional charges were filed against Robbins for his courtroom misconduct. His 25-year sentence stands, and a later appeal of the case was denied. Next, we're in Paris, Kentucky, where 30-year-old Bass Webb has been charged with two counts of attempted murder. This surveillance video taken outside a Kentucky jail a week earlier captured the moment when Webb, a former inmate there who served three months on assault charges, accelerated his car and tried to run over two jail employees. One man was able to get out of the way, but one man was injured after Webb's vehicle pinned him against the wall. At his first court appearance before Judge Vanessa Dixon, Webb's bad behavior continued. Can you order side? Yeah. That be yes? <clears throat> yes. Judge Dixon then informed Webb she's recusing herself from the trial because she knew the two jail employees he targeted with his vehicle. There is no way I'm going to try this case. I have any further proceedings or I have to see you for one further second. Watch again as Webb literally spit on the judge. Target. But this incident is far from the last time Bass Webb will spit in the face of the law. While waiting to go to trial, he and four other inmates incited a riot inside the Fayette County Detention Center. After being shot with beanbag bullets, then hit in the neck by a pepper ball, Webb whips a metal telephone box at a corrections officer. If I were to launch this at someone 10 feet away, because this is capable of stopping that does not mean that that is not readily capable of causing death or serious physical injury. Webb was found guilty of third degree assault and sentenced to 15 years in prison. And for his attempt to run over the two jail employees, he was later found guilty of two counts of attempted murder and got an additional 37 years. Bass Webb was facing a total of 52 years behind bars, but more disturbing accusations were on the way. While incarcerated, he was charged with the unsolved murder of an ex-girlfriend. Facing a possible death sentence if convicted at trial, Webb pled guilty to the murder and got an additional 50 years. Now, five years later, Bass Webb is back in court yet again after being charged with the murder of a different girlfriend nearly a decade earlier. Cold case came back to haunt him after a jailhouse tip led to the discovery of the woman's remains. This time as he's let in, he reveals a new sinister look that shocks those in attendance. A closer look at Webb's recent head tattoos reveals a demented murder hit list. It reads, those that must die, all judges, all prosecutors, all cops, the media. Below that, three rats have been scratched out and many more, plus an expletive on the other side. Gruesome details emerge about how Webb choked his then girlfriend to death and buried her body in a shallow grave. Mr. Webb, do you want to come forward? When the judge asks Webb to come forward, he remains seated and smiles. Finally, after more than a week in the courtroom, the judge reads the jury's verdict. You have found the defendant guilty of the offense of intentional murder. Bass Webb is then sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. We're in Tuscola County in Michigan for a sentencing hearing. 
38-year-old Thomas Schmotzer has been convicted of two counts of third degree fleeing a police officer, two counts of assaulting, resisting, or obstructing a police officer, and operating a vehicle while intoxicated. Today, he's in front of Judge Amy Grace Gearhart. She's just sentenced Schmotzer to six to 20 years in prison for his crimes. The hearing's wrapping up, and Tuscola Sheriff's Office Sergeant Nate Licht escorts Schmotzer out of the courtroom as Judge Gearhart leaves the bench. Schmotzer's hands are cuffed and attached to a chain around his waist. Prosecuting attorney Mark Reen and Department of Corrections agent Jeremiah Hulbert are at the prosecution table. As Schmotzer passes, he stops to make one last comment. According to arrest records, Schmotzer curses at prosecutor Reen and angrily knocks down the plexiglass divider between Reen and Hulbert. A struggle ensues. Bailiff Rodney Birch rushes in to assist as Licht gets Schmotzer in a headlock. Birch grabs Schmotzer's left arm and the two officers attempt to subdue the defendant. Corrections agent Hulbert tries to grab a leg, but Schmotzer kicks at him. The defendant continues to resist as bystanders look on. Lick takes Schmotzer to the floor to subdue him as more officers run into the room to assist. Eventually, a pair of leg cuffs are brought in and they make another attempt to move Schmotzer. But again, he resists, this time making hacking noises as if he's getting ready to spit. Finally, after six and a half minutes and the efforts of 12 law enforcement officers, Schmotzer is picked up and forcibly removed from the courtroom. In the hallway, he's placed in a restraint chair for his trip to the county jail. It's expected that additional charges will be filed against Schmotzer for the courtroom scuffle. He's currently incarcerated. The incident, along with others earlier that year, moved Judge Gearhart to request more funding for security in the courthouse. Good afternoon, what is your name? Uh, Philip Conklin. Next, we're in Ypsilanti, Michigan for an arraignment. 35-year-old Philip Conklin has been charged with arson and assault with intent to commit murder. A day earlier, according to police, Conklin was staying at his sister's house where he was supposed to be babysitting her four young kids. But instead, the defendant allegedly set fire to the home with the children still inside. Neighbors called the fire department who quickly extinguished the blaze. None of the children were hurt. Conklin was arrested and officially charged. And today, he appears before Judge Tamara Garwood to hear if he'll make bond. Count one alleges that you did make an assault upon the intent to commit the crime of murder. Do you understand this first charge? No, I don't. That's OK, so I'm not asking if you agree or if you disagree with the charge. I'm asking if you understand that's what you've been charged with. No, I don't, I don't understand. You don't no. understand? No. OK, so then we will go through that word by word. It alleges that you did that with intent, that you were going to accomplish the crime of murder. Do you understand no. that? No, I don't. You guys no. are ridiculous. Sir, do you understand what the charge is? Not do you agree with it, but do you understand what she's Sure, says? I do. Yeah, you guys are out of your minds, though. So the maximum penalty for that charge, it's a felony. Um, it's a life or any number of years. So do you understand that maximum penalty? Yes. After reviewing the arson charge, the judge asked prosecutor Jessica Blanche for the state's bond recommendation. We're asking for a $50,000 surety bond in this case. The defendant allegedly took gasoline, poured it all over a house that uh, housed children and said he was going to burn the house down. The door was locked to where the children were. The police had to come in and, and retrieve the ch children from the locked door. 
If he does post that, I'm asking for a GPS tether and no go to that address where the children were at. The kids were not at the house at the time of the incident. Right. She's wrong. Yeah, the right the kids left that. to their grandmother's house. They were gone. The judge ignores Conklin's outburst and moves on to her decision regarding bonds. Having read the information that's been presented to me, I'm concerned for the safety of the family involved here, and I'm concerned for the safety of the community at large. Oh, yeah. Are you done? Didn't do a thing wrong. Okay, so your bond is going to be $150,000. Take that 150000 shove it up your ass. Thank you, sir. You're all set. You can let the jail staff know you're done. Before he exits, Conklin has one final comment for the court. <laughs> After spitting at the camera and delivering an obscene finger gesture, Conklin's escorted back to his cell. He remains in custody, and his case is pending. Next, we're in Tampa, Florida for a sentencing hearing. 46-year-old Teddy Baltimore Smith has been convicted of manslaughter in the road rage death of 56-year-old Gilbert Cerna. A year and a half earlier, Smith was stopped at a red light when Gilbert, who was sitting in the passenger seat of a truck in the next lane, spit out his window and onto Smith's BMW. Gilbert apologized, saying he hadn't meant to spit on the car, but Smith became enraged. He got out of his car, slapped Gilbert with a flip-flop, and threw food at him. As the two men continued to argue, Smith retrieved a knife from his car and plunged it into Gilbert's chest, cutting his heart in half. Smith then fled the scene, but the driver of the truck, Gilbert's co-worker, Jeffrey Hunter, followed it while calling 911. What's going on there? I got spelled, man. Did he pass? Yeah, he did. Okay, do you think he's beyond any? I know he's dead, man. He did, he did. They got spelled. Heart. Hunter tailed Smith for a mile before pulling over. Police and EMTs arrived moments later. Gilbert, who had no pulse, was transported to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Surveillance footage identified Smith's car and an alert was issued. Police eventually caught up to him, but when detectives questioned him, he denied any involvement in the stabbing. Smith was released, but his car was impounded and a folding knife was found in the trunk. Investigators also lifted Smith's palm print from the passenger side of Hunter's truck and issued a warrant for Smith's arrest. The following day, Smith was located at a gas station, arrested and charged with second degree murder. At trial, Jeffrey Hunter, the coworker, testified about Gilbert's tragic last moments. What did Gilberto do after he was stuck with the knife? I just looked over at me like, damn, he got me, and that was it. He died within maybe, seemed like, probably about five seconds. The jury basically had three options. Convict Smith on second-degree murder, convict him on the lesser charge of manslaughter, or find him not guilty. They voted to convict on manslaughter. Today at sentencing, prosecuting attorney Amanda Catula reads an impact statement from the victim's sister, Rosalinda Serna, who's sitting nearby. Because of you, my family and I will never share precious moments together. Nothing you receive will ever bring him back to us. Because of you, there will always be a big part of my heart missing. When Smith is given the chance to address the court, he does not express remorse. In fact, he blames the victim. Well, he pulled up on me and he spit on me. You know what I'm saying? After I asked him, please not to do that. I don't know how come he did that. Why would he do that to me? I don't even know him. Smith's statement lasts 15 minutes, which is too long for Gilbert's sister, who walks out of the courtroom before he finishes. The prosecution recommended a 25-year sentence. 
but the judge gives Smith 28. Now you're giving me 28 years. He'll be eligible for release in 2045, when he'd be 72 years old. Next, we go to Wichita, Kansas, for the sentencing of Michael Gaines. He's been convicted of battery against a law enforcement officer. Gaines appears before Judge Rebecca Pilshaw, who speaks to the defendant about his actions. All the evidence shows that you deliberately yeah okay yeah 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 I know the you words did. were that you deliberately were hawking up i didn't hawk up no saliva okay uh, that's bull and you're gonna believe those lies that's what i'm talking about i didn't hawk up no saliva you're gonna believe a lie because they were in uniform the judge attempts to bring some order to the proceedings look at me it's I'm like eagle you ain't gotta scream at me you oh. You're going to raise your voice at me? Oh, my God. Gaines doesn't appear to be backing down from the judge, but it's nothing compared to what he has in store for assistant DA Kevin O'Connor. You raise your voice to me, I raise my voice to you. You just in a row. I appreciate Mr. Gaines making my point for <laughs> You punk. Very well received. Maggot mother And I don't, I don't think I have to take insults from I know. Words. You You uh, Use you He's a, a tough guy now. So you, you's a, but I think you's a, you'll be a after I get sentenced. I think Mr. Gaines is forfeited. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm I, you punk. I'm talking. Take out of the courtroom. Judge Pilshaw steps in, has Gaines removed, but before heading back to his cell, Gaines manages to get off a few more insults. He's a maggot. You're a tough guy. He's a maggot, punk. You should have died when you was a baby. Yeah. What the f maggot? Anytime, Mr. Gaines. Shut up, punk. He's a maggot. You should have died when you was a baby. Still born. The judge decides to go beyond the 10 years and sentences Gaines to 13 years in a state prison. Thanks for being a fan of Court Cam. Subscribe to A&E to never miss a new video and catch full episodes on AETV.com.